Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Rat Selectors. And today we're gonna to look at first party and third party peripherals for the Sega Dreamcast. Typically form factor and comfort is the first priority when making a controller, but not always. Today let's take a look at some of first party and third party controllers that made its way to the Sega Dreamcast. As with any home console, we are introduced to gaming accessories, some much needed and some not at all. Today let's take a look at some of the best, worst and obscure Sega Dreamcast accessories. As with any console, you are greeted to the first party entry of accessories. First party accessories are the console's manufacturers, i.e. Nintendo, Sony, Sega, made products which usually have their seal of approval. Third party are creators of games or accessories that are made from various companies under one manufacturer, i.e. Mad Cats, Activision, Retro Fighters, etc. Typically, first party accessories are made specifically for the console and designed after the console. Sega Dreamcast first party controllers came in various colors and sizes, from light guns to maracas, fishing rods, steering wheels, fight sticks, flight sticks, keyboards and mouses, <laughs> the Sega Dreamcast had you covered. Third party controllers are usually a complete overhaul of the first party counterparts. Although designed as a cheap replacement for the sometimes overpriced first party controllers or accessories, some are quite good and do a wonderful job. Memory cards and controller add-ons. Along with any controller, during the sixth generation of consoles, memory cards were needed. But unlike the GameCube and PS2, the Dreamcast memory card and add-ons were meant for the controllers. The VMU or visual memory unit was a novel idea when introduced. Having a screen and dedicated controllers, which allowed you to play on the go, swap saves with friends, but it didn't end there. Many other first party add-ons were needed to take the Dreamcast to the next level. But again, as with any first party memory card, there were more third party entries. Some stripped of their first party features, i.e. the screen or controls, while many rumble packs required batteries themselves to work. Third party companies were not granted access to first party features due to either cost restraints or first party's willingness to allow them to use them. Again, some third party memory cards, rumble packs, added some cheap, affordable price and great features. Some add-ons were never copied due to their practicality and their overall use in games. Console add-ons. Some console manufacturers have plans for console specific add-ons in the future. Some that were never made while others never took off. The Sega Dreamcast had its share of great console add-on ideas that were adopted by consoles today. For example, broadband adapter and VGA box. And some that were region specific, like the karaoke machine, the Dream Eye, or the Dream Phone. While others were not required and were made by third party companies, like the DC cooling fan. The Sega Dreamcast is no stranger to the accessory market, some of which became staples to consoles today, while others were as quirky and weird as a console was. Along with consoles in the sixth generation, the Dreamcast had many variations of colors of their controllers. Some from the very common white to the some extreme yellow see-through variant, and Japan saw a huge market of accessories released there. From controllers to the Dream Eye, the Japanese market saw a huge success. What are your favorite Sega Dreamcast accessories? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out my other Dreamcast videos. I post them almost regularly. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks guys.